it stopped. I love it. It, I got it. That's what it said. Well, we've got one minute, and we'll get going. I wonder if anyone will hear me. Oh, we don't. Let's see. I don't see Renee there. I think she must be though. Is she there? Thank you. Thank you very much. She has an announcement to make, so I'm hoping she's there. <laughs> All right. If we can get people to settle in your pews, we're going to get started here. I don't know. <laughs> that was very good. Thank you. Oh. We used to in seminary the the instructor, whoever's trying to get attention of all these people, he would say, the, the president would say, The Lord be with you. Oh, so yeah, and Lutherans will say, and also with you. You know, it's just like how we breathe. So we are going to get started. If you can come and take your place, be great. Um, so good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, excellent. Thank you. Zoomers are here. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> that was very good. Thank you. Um. It is so fun to be here today. I really figured I wasn't going to, but there's no wind and the rain is very little and the power is on, which is really a remarkable thing. And I'm blessing that every minute. Um, I heard from a reliable source that Dale and Alay Winget were in the concert last night and that um, they're doing that Dale is doing so much better. He was in a wheelchair and looking great. He faces more surgeries, but he's doing better. He really suffered in the past few months. And that's such, such good day, good news um, for today. We're continuing our journey through Epiphany and we're discovering more about who Jesus is and what his ministry is all about. Right in the next few Sundays, we're gonna hear about um, how Jesus is calling his disciples calling you and me as well. Upcoming events, uh, we will resume our Psalm study, Coffee with Calvary on Wednesday at 9.30, it's on Zoom. This is a really fast 30 minute study um, and anyone can join. You need to let me know though, so I can send you a Zoom invitation. It is such a privilege to uh, look at some of the most beautiful and meaningful scriptures of all, I think. Um, so let me know if you'd like to be part. I would love to include you. Um, on the fourth Sunday of January, we begin uh, having a guest preacher, and it's going to be uh, Rev uh, Reverend Jerry Gray Renneberg has, has decided, and she's graciously decided she will be with us on the fourth Sundays and most of the months. Um, she's a member of our congregation, but she serves at Christ Church. Um, and you already know her, and she is a truly gifted and blessed um, pastor. And you and talking about blessed, we're really blessed to have her. Um, are there any other announcements? I know Renee has one. Renee, are you there? There she is. Bless her heart. She does so much for us. Um, I'm, I'm here today because a year ago, Margaret Stevens, a member of Calvary and a really dear friend, uh, died suddenly. There's a verse in Psalm 116 that states, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Margaret lived her life knowing she was precious to the Lord. She was one of the kindest and most generous people that I've known. Margaret was precious to many people, so her memorial service, which was held here at Calvary, was filled with people who <laughs> met to celebrate the life that she had lived. Margaret's husband, Jim, is here with us today, and her grandson, Addie, and oh. uh, they have come uh, 
to say, and um, Jim would like to say a few words to us. Yay. Jim, do you want to come up? So glad you're here, Jim. Let's do it this way. <laughs> uh, a year ago today, Margaret passed away. And what I wanted to do here today was just thank you. Thank this church, thank your congregation, and especially thank Mike and Renee Delaney for all the help and support they've given me this past year. My grandson, Atticus, and my very good friend, Don. They have been, they've supported me all year long and helped me and helped me remember Margaret. So thank you all. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Renee, for your help. I appreciate it. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for saying. What a wonderful tribute to members of this congregation and to his wonderful wife. To have someone say that takes so much courage. Aw. Um, I see him and Atticus hugging one another in the back. They are so, so special. Well, are there any other announcements we need to make? If not, let's begin with the prelude by Jerry. Now, this is connected. Um, I chose going home. Going home. That's cool. It's going home because you weren't up trying to skip it because that's crazy. We're all going to get to go home someday. Yeah.
Incredibly beautiful. Thank you, Gary, and very thoughtful. We'll continue now with the piece. Please stand. The peace of the Lord, the word made flesh, be with you always. Our gathering him today, will you come and follow me? Confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who stretches out the heavens, who sends light to the nation, who gives breath to us all. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Loving God, we confess that we have turned from your way to follow, follow our, our own ways. ways. Forgive us for the time we have spoken or acted too quickly. We have not spoken or acted at all. We have hurt those closest to us. We have hurt those we have yet to know. 
We have thought more about ourselves than others. We have thought less of ourselves than we ought. Turn us around and give us a fresh start so that we can live again as your children. Amen. Even when we have done wrong, God makes us right. Even when we have messed up, God puts us together. God's love never runs out. God never tires of calling us beloved children. Hear God say to you now, your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our hymn of praise for Epiphany, beautiful Savior. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Special Music by Jerry and Dennis. I didn't know what Jerry was going to play for the prelude, so these are not intended to be connected, but they are. The <laughs> medley I put together for today, in part, was by request. 
but the title is I Will Follow Thee, My Savior, Home. <laughs> We'll continue now with the readings. Renee is our reader this morning. Well, what a day that's going to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Our first reading is um, from Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 20. At a time when visions are rare and unexpected, the Lord comes to Samuel and calls him to speak the divine word. Though just a boy, Samuel responds to God obediently, as Eli the priest has taught him to respond. This marks the beginning of Samuel's prophetic ministry, a reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. 
The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose sight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of the Lord was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went, lay down in his place, and now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did nothing to restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, Here I am. Eli said, What is it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to read the psalm responsively. It's Psalm 139, 1 through 6, and 13 through 18. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. I held my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book, they fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20.
Paul helps the Corinthians understand that God has claimed the entirety of their lives through the death of Christ. Hence, Christian relationships and conduct, including areas of human sexuality, are to reflect the reality that we belong to Christ and that the Holy Spirit lives within us. A reading from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to be a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your own body. Here, uh, this is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with the last reading for the day, which is the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He brought Philip and said to him, he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from the Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to Nathanael, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Last week, we heard again the story of Jesus' baptism when God said, You are my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. That's who Jesus is, God's Son, and the God is pleased with him. We are also reminded of who we are, for we heard that through our baptism, we are God's beloved children, and he is pleased with us too. In fact, through baptism, we're invited into God's family, given forgiveness, special spiritual gifts, and a new life. We have heard a couple of invitations in today's last reading. Jesus invited Philip with the words, follow me. Then later, Philip invited Nathanael, come and see. An invitation, as you know, can take many forms, even a request to play the game of hide and seek. Long ago, while my mother prepared dinner, I'd watch my brother and sisters, including Penny, who is a Zoomer. We'd play hide and seek. I was almost always it. it took a long time for me to find those kids. For when they, well, they were hiding behind the same bushes they always hid and would giggle, I pretended I didn't know where they were, for they were out of my hair. I knew 
I certainly knew where they were, but when I'd call, they'd never answer. Yet when my mother invited us to come and eat, we'd all run. During that same time of my life, I attended three hour, three years of confirmation class, which lasted two hours every Saturday morning. It was during those years I learned God played his own kind of hide and seek. And God is always it. And he always knows where we are. My confirmation teacher, Mrs. Ann Way, led my 50-member class through the study of the Bible's Old Testament and pointed out God's search of us. In the first book of the Bible, Genesis, she pointed to the beginning of that search by looking at chapter 3. There we read about Adam and Eve, how they'd been given an entire Garden of Eden in which to live, and God gave them a single rule. Don't eat the fruit of that tree. And of course they did. And so they sinned, broke their relationship with God. But God came and sought them. In their guilt, Adam and Eve hid from him behind some bushes. As my teacher, Mrs. Wade said, God who just created the world must have known where they were. But still he called out to Adam and Eve, where are you? After a while, Adam answered God, and they were in relationship again. And though that, and through that relationship, though they continued to sin, they found grace. Again, as Mrs. Wade said, God always searches for and calls out to his people, waiting for them to respond. In today's psalm, we heard Renee uh, read, O oh Lord, you have searched me out and known me. Oh, Lord, you've searched me out and known me. We heard God search in other readings for today. In the first reading, God kept calling to a young boy in the night. At first, Samuel didn't know who called, but with help, he learned that the voice of God was from God, and Samuel answered, here I am. In the last reading, Jesus did the searching. He found Nathaniel, who asked the Lord, where did you know me from? To which Jesus replied, I saw you. Nathaniel came to know Jesus and followed him. God loves us. When we respond to him, remarkable things happen. Samuel responded and he grew in to be a prophet. Nathaniel responded and became one of Jesus' first disciples. And just as God made himself known to Samuel and to Nathaniel, he does to each of us. God's hide-and-seek search for his people is a major theme throughout Scripture. For God continually comes to us, shows us who he is, and urges us to come out of our hiding place and to see his love for us. Yet as God draws near, he not only shows us who he is, but also who we are. We're his. These are our revelations or epiphanies, eye-opening revelations, experiences. God invites us to come and to see. God seeks us in infinite ways, through his word and sacraments, worship and traditions, through his creation, and through you and me. When I was in seminary, I was assigned to list three specific times that God made himself known to me. These are everyday kinds of experiences and they're real. The first one, I said, when I was in an astronomy class, I looked through a telescope and I saw the rings of Saturn and I was shook by the reality of God, the creator. A second experience. During a difficult time my, in my life, an elderly woman whom I hadn't known and who wasn't a churchgoer spoke words of grace and I was overcome by God's mercy. A third experience, members from another denomination visited me one time when I was very lonely and feeling abandoned. Through them, God's spirit reminded me that I was part of a larger community of faith. A more recent experience, a personal experience of God's search happened during one of our circle meetings after a, faith, a week of faith draining issues. Members of the circle shared remarkable times when God was with them. And I remembered, I remembered God's presence in the brokenness of my life too. Even when we hide behind our suffering or busyness, 
our sin or other things, God comes with his grace. Our experiences with God may seem or ordinary, but they're epiphanies, they're eye-opening at revelations. Through them, God's love gets past all that stuff, all that crap we piled up to hide from him. And when we respond, things happen. God even sends us out to invite others to the good news, to come and see. And you know what the good news is. God loves us, sent his son to die and rise again to bring us into relationship and give us life. God finds us for he's always with us. Finally, I'd like to share a portion of my favorite song about God's steadfast presence. The, uh, the psalmist wrote hundreds of years ago, but still so meaningful, he wrote, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there, even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand and let us sing. Here I am, Lord. sky. I've heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall
We join with congregations around the world to confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ, gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has miraculously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacemakers, peacekeepers, and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most, most vulnerable. Let us pray. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, that God console all who suffer. Let us pray. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, so that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We pray for those afflicted with COVID, members of the military, and our government of officials. We pray for members and friends of Calvary, Pat, Edward and Rebecca, Lyndon and Lisa, Darcy, Bob, Dorothy, Carl and Carol, our ministry, our partners in ministry, Christ Lutheran Church, our Savior's Lutheran, Emmanuel Lutheran, Lutheran Church of Arcata, Grace Good Shepherd, Bayshore Light Church, Reverend Jeff Johnson, Sierra Synod Bishop, ELCA Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, in thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision in the gospel and action, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your son, Jesus Christ, our savior. Amen. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. We give thanks for all your works of merciful power and ask you to shape us as people of your justice and freedom. We, we magnify and adore you through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let us center ourselves for the gift of Holy Communion through the thanksgiving at the table. And together, let us make the sign of the cross as these words are said. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, 
the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. In the night in which she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Body of Christ, broken for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God, incarnate power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A blessing for those of you who just communed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. And for you who are about to commune, an invitation. Jesus invites you to this table. We come to eat and live. The table is set and all are welcome. Come and fill our hearts with your
please stand. Let us pray. Lord, it is good for us to be here, for we have tested your glory in this holy meal. Continue your goodness as we go out from here. Open our eyes to see your face shining in every person. And send us to be your servants in every place. You are the life and light of all, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Continue with the sending him, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Our final lesson. God the Father, light creator, God the Son, light from light, and God the Holy Spirit, life reveal light revealer, bless you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the postlude by Jerry.
that Jesus be. Beautiful, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Zoomers, please unmute. Go in peace. Make God's love known. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 Oh, we're so good at that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all for being here on this stormy weekend go through floods and wind and rain to get here and even snow in the Northwest. We bless you all this week and look forward to seeing you again next week. God, bye-bye. God be with you. <laughs>